Welcome to a new episode of Return to the Kruger. This one based around Skakuza. We're leaving Satara now for Skakuza. Um, and as usual, we can't check in till two o'clock, but it's only a one and a half hour drive to the camp. That means we've got to find something to do uh, for the morning. And with the gravel roads uh, probably still closed, I think that's going to be a bit of a challenge. We're actually heading in the opposite direction now, uh, northwards, and uh, we'll turn around a bit later and uh, then head down south towards uh, Skakuza. The one big bonus is uh, it's a beautiful morning. It's rained again overnight, but uh, at the moment, very few clouds and it doesn't look as if it's going to rain. Let's hope this stays that way. Those kudu were all we found driving north, but when we returned to Satara, we found uh, wildebeest and impala standing still and staring into the distance. The reason soon became obvious. Those two magnificent males were a great joy, but then suddenly, from the left, uh, came a famous white lion known as Casper. We'd seen him very briefly on a previous visit, but this was the first time we got to spend some time with him.
It was great to get back on a gravel road again, even though this one only led down to a water hole. But you can see why the gravel road still remained closed. One big advantage of uh, driving between Satara and uh, Skakuza is that you have to pass by Chokwani, which of course means you really have to stop in and have a breakfast. You can see here at Chokwani just how high the river's been. That's what, good 10 feet or so above its uh, current level and normally it's uh, not even flowing this fast.
Right, we've got unit 185 of Skakuza, which is quite deep into the camp. We've never actually been this far before, uh, normally with one of the smaller units. And uh, um, I think we're going to get, I don't know what these are, they look uh, like plums or something like that. I doubt if they are, but there's hundreds of them. I think they're going to probably damage the cars. Anyway, this looks a very nice unit. Uh, that's, that's very, very private. With quite a few stitches. And um, once we get inside, it's a, a very big uni actually. It's a standard rendezvous, but uh, a lot bigger than most of them. Two beds there. Another bed over there. Um, the sink as usual sort of poked into a corner and the shower and toilet in there. That's quite a nice big unit. And as I say, as you come outside, um, it's very, very private. It's very pleasant. Looks like we've got a real treat outside our unit. I weren't sure what they were, but uh, apparently we can stay in all night and uh, brew our own Amarula. Save us a fortune. We're all settled in at Skakuza now, and to be honest, I don't feel like going out for an afternoon drive. Those four lions this morning uh, back at Satora, and that uh, lovely water monitor crossing the bridge uh, will do us fine for today, I think. So instead of going out for a drive, I think I'll sit and have a glass or three of wine. 
It's just gone half past four, and uh, the camp gates now close at six o'clock. This is March now. Uh, previously, in the last couple of weeks, they've closed at uh, half past six. So it doesn't give us a lot of time to uh, get away from the camp and find anything anyway. So that'll be it for the first day at Skakuza, and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the morning uh, nice and bright and early. In the meantime, good health, and I'll have a glass or two of wine. You have to get wild dogs in the uh, Skakuza area, but to be honest, I'd prefer a leopard uh, in the next couple of days. Although we've seen uh, four or five uh, leopards so far, none of them have been close enough or for long enough to actually film, so five minutes uh, with a leopard would be very nice. We had to leave the sighting very carefully as the young hyenas were still sniffing around our car.
With all the gravel roads around Skukuza closed, uh, we've come as far as Pretoria Scott this morning. We're headed down the uh, S1 towards Pabini Gate, fully expecting to uh, turn around and go back, but then we're pleasantly surprised to find that the S3 gravel road, which uh, gives access to Pretoria Scott, was uh, open. Not only that, it was bone dry and uh, easily drivable, so we're hoping that in the next day or two, some of the other gravel roads will be open. This gives us a chance now to go back uh, along the other main road, the H11 I think it is, and uh, that's a good place to see Sable Antelope if there's any around. We head back towards uh, Skakuza now, um, although it's still early, so we've got plenty of time. Driving along the H11 showed us just how restricted we were with the gravel roads. This is the S65. This is not the S65, it's the S66. This is the S65 
obviously they've sent the grader down there, so hopefully that'll be open in a couple of days. S112. S113. Good job they put the logs there, because you could drive into the wire. This is the H22, closed at AFSAL, but strangely uh, not closed at Pretoria Scop on the where it comes out. The S114. Well, there have been one or two nice moments, but it's been hard going this morning uh, up and down the main roads. To give you an idea what we're up against, uh, here we are at uh, Skakuza. Uh, this morning we've uh, gone down this road here. Now, luckily, the S3 there was open, which allowed us to go down there. And this section from Pretoria Scop all the way up to this junction we saw one elephant and two giraffe, and that was it. We then went down here to uh, Afsal Picnic Spot, and then all the way back up to Skakuza. We are lucky enough to get a lion, or a pair of lions, uh, sort of about here. Now, all of these uh, yellow roads you see are all the gravel roads. Um, and all around here, all the centre of this, um, going up that way, all around here, these are all gravel roads and uh, they're all shut. They're all closed down because of the uh, uh, severe weather almost three weeks ago now and, uh, and the rain we've had since. So until those roads are open, we're really restricted just to go up and down the red roads you can see on the map. That restricts us quite a lot because a lot of the sightings you get in the Kruger are down these little gravel roads where there's loads of water holes, um, you get a, you know, rhino and leopard down these little roads. Um, plus, plus you, you can make loops out of them and you can uh, extend your day by uh, 
going around loops on the various roads. So we're hoping really that uh, the sunshine continues and uh, after a day or two um, we can actually start using those roads again. After Skikuza we're going down to Lower Sabi here um, so really we're much in the same position it's uh, uh, we need those roads to be open. Have a break now and uh, we'll see what this afternoon brings. <laughs>
This is the main road between uh, Skakuza and Lower Sabi. And then Lower Sabi is going to be our next camp. So we're going to have to find uh, an alternative route uh, through because I don't think that's going to be open. Uh, it's a long way round if you can't go this way. Well, we found our leopard yesterday, but uh, only on the night drive, so I still haven't got any film of a leopard. So as well as a leopard, uh, we're also uh, on the lookout today for a rhino, which we haven't seen yet. So we're going to head down towards Bergen Dahl and uh, see if we can find a rhino and uh, hopefully another leopard down there. Also hoping that uh, they've got petrol down there with a car machine that works because Skakuza, for some reason, won't accept car payments on the uh, petrol.
Well, we set off looking for rhinos and uh, sure enough, here they were. After you've been in the Kruger for a week or more, it's surprising what you can see from a distance. Can you spot the elephant in this shot? Heading back from Crocodile Bridge on the same road we'd taken, we were surprised to find that the rhinos were still there. 
We thought there were four at the beginning, but we counted up and there were eight. When it's Kakuza, a visit to Lake Panic Birdhide is always a must. Except on this occasion it was closed off, just like all the gravel roads. And then we finally found our leopard. Well, what a great last day at Skakuza. Not only did I finally get some decent uh, leopard footage, but that leopard uh, made up our big five for the day. 
Although I didn't get any video, we did see a couple of uh, buffalo down at Bergen Dahl. Some good news is that uh, one of the gravel roads alongside the Sabi River has now been opened. Uh, so we're hoping uh, tomorrow, in the next couple of days, we might be able to get back on the uh, gravel roads. Join us in the next episode uh, when uh, I'm hoping that my uh, lucky new hat will give us some good sightings at Lower Sabi.